Good morning, those of you who are in Facebook land, our Facebook uh, family. This is the day that the Lord has made, so we ought to rejoice and do what, Pastor Pat? Be glad in That's it. right, because it's another day to get it right with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we are so excited and happy to greet you in the name of love, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, to the beloved community churches, uh, Sunday virtual worship service. Oh, we are going to be blessed this later on this afternoon to hear from the preach word from our very own Reverend Dr. Deborah Hoy Jones. And so we hope that there's something we do or say or even imagine that it blesses your heart and blesses your spirit. So we again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Amen. I'm now going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can get our work of service started. Amen. And we like to, first of all, let focus on the fact that we have a new theme this year, refocused, refrained, renewed from Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is from the New Revised Standard Updated Edition translation. This is a new month, you all. Can you believe it? We are already, we're through January and we're already into February. And February, as we know, is Black History Month, although we also know that Black history should just be relegated to one month. It should be 24-7, 365 days a year, 52 weeks, two 52 weeks in the year. And then this is the month that we particularly focus on or highlight Black History Month. We always start with our vision statement. We are an open, open and affirming Christian, Christian community that is committed, committed to sharing the unconditional love of Christ by serving others with compassion, integrity, moral courage, divine discipline, and intelligent faith. Woo-hoo! The woo-woo is always for Reverend Dr. Dad. Amen. And now we have our invocation. Pastor Guy will read the white font, and we will read silently or at our homes the dark print. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for calling us to you from all corners of the world to come home to belong. We appreciate your love that embraces all of us. We thank you that we are all one in you. We thank you for your faithfulness and justice. When we were aliens and foreigners, you welcomed us. We thank you for calling us to your ministry to live and do your work with the mind of Christ. Remind us that we are here to fulfill your calling to serve. Help us have all we do be done in love. During this year's Black History Month, we want to draw closer to you as we make a commitment to go into the world as agents of your justice, peace, and reconciliation. Gracious God, we need your help to do your work and fulfill this task you have given us. We are proud to be part of the church that is serving you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You all notice we have a new uh, litany this month, amen, for Black History Month. Amen. Now we're going to have our... um, Praise and worship. Every I don't know if you all know, every first Sunday I play this song because it's communion Sunday too. Amen. And this is the song, The Blood Still Works. Amen. Amen.
Just log myself out some kind of way. Section, but it's, I gotta give them their props. Go ahead, Alto. Amen. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Everybody, ultimately, that's okay. The panels are good too, but it's nothing like the Alto section. Amen. And when I'm in heaven, I'll be saying Alto. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we are so excited to, this morning. We're going to be blessed with Dr. Laura Daughtry, who's going to give us our Black History moment. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my slides so she can share hers. Amen. Dr. Laura, let me pin you. Oops. There we go. Dr. Laura, you need to unmute. Yep, I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as many times as you do this, every time you get ready to do it, it's, it's another thing. So this is Black History Month. It's February, the month the United States celebrates Black history. Um, and as we know, the designation of this month as the time to honor the achievements of African Americans began with an idea promoted by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, and he's the founder of the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, now called African American Life and History. Woodson himself, the son of a former slave, did not begin his own formal education until age 20. In 1912, he became the second African-American to earn a PhD at Harvard University. In 1926, Dr. Woodson began the celebration of Negro History Week, and he chose that time um, in February was because it was between the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. In 1976, this week was expanded to what we now know as the month-long celebration we have now. Um, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History continues his legacy. I'll put in the chat the URL for the um, association. One thing I did not realize, as old as I am, is that the association selects themes for Black History Month each year. This year, the theme is 
Black Health and Wellness. And they have a whole bunch of activities planned for the month. Most of them are virtual. They have a virtual festival. This one um, has a, um, a talk about race norming in the NFL. And you know, that's a big topic right now. And then of course, we all know about exploitation in medicine. This year, the association wants us to pay attention to the legacy of black scholars and medical practitioners from those who investigate the medicinal qualities of plants like George Washington Carver to Dr. Kizmekia Corbett. She's the scientist who was instrumental in the groundbreaking research that led to the development of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. This theme asks people of African descent to pay attention to our strengths, the things that we have done in the past to, to be well. As Pastor Sherry uh, preached a few months ago, African-Americans are in the middle of a syndemic. We, we face special challenges from the COVID-19 pandemic, racial violence and brutality, the HIV AIDS crisis, the opioid crisis, voter suppression, and a host of local challenges like the Flint water situation. Despite this, um, there are more efforts than ever to inform us and assist our people with the reality of health disparities. Things like the Black Women's Health Imperative or The Read, a podcast that has discussed mental health. Our congregation is fortunate to have healthcare providers among our midst to keep us up to date with the latest information. BCC members like Pastor Sherry, Dr. Deborah Ann Hoyt-Jones and Robin Lewis, if you have a concern, they are more than willing to talk to you. So humans are mind, body, and spirit. All three dimensions of our existence need to be cared for to the best of our individual ability. I know that attending to some of these issues is very scary for us because the problems negotiating the system are real. So let me tell you the story. I always tell stories. My younger, a few years ago, my younger brother was diagnosed with prostate cancer but he had no insurance because he was working for himself. As we tried to problem solve what to do because the surgery would be $10,000, I didn't have $10,000, he didn't have $10,000. I suggested looking for a clinical trial because I'm a social worker, right? So he says to me, look, Laura, clinical trials are for people like your clients. They are not for people like me. I didn't respond, I was a little angry. A few days later, he calls me to say he found two trials for which he was eligible. One was at the National Institutes of Health and they required no money. And the other one was at GBMC, but GBMC wanted the patient to absorb the cost of the lab work. GBMC determined that he was eligible for the Maryland Medical Assistance Program and they began the application process for him. Ultimately, he decided to go with NIH. And within a year, the principal investigator, the physician told him he was in complete remission. They got the cancer in the nick of time. The Maryland Medical Assistance application went forward. So now he had health insurance, right? He had everything he wanted. I tell you this story to say this, it is scary and overwhelming. When you have a challenge, you know, a spiritual, mental, or physical challenge, talk to people, lots of people about your concerns. And then the final thing is remember whose child you are. Remember you are God's favorite child. The association wants us to look to the past to provide light for the future, because no matter what we are facing, we have to remember this is not God's first rodeo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura. That was excellent. She got in healthcare and Black History Month and get yourself some help. Amen. And I love the story because why is the story important? Because it's, it's a real life example. And as uh, Reverend Samaris Hall would say, an application to, to the principles that you had. So thank you again, Dr. Laura, for that wonderful, um, wonderful presentation. Amen. I also want to announce that during this Black History Month, your own uh, Reverend Dr. Sherry Davis Moloch will be presenting um, a presentation on Black Health and Wellness for the entire Department of Treasury, uh, where I work. Uh, so it will be a webinar that's webcast uh, web, uh, 
throughout the entire Department of Treasury, which has about 100,000 employees. Um, so we're waiting on the date and all the specifics of it. And as soon as we receive it, uh, we'll be alerting you to when that is so you can uh, join in as well. Thank you for that unashamedly <laughs> self-focused plug after God, which is now, as y'all know, embarrassing me, but it's all good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So thank you again, Reverend Dr. Laura. I'm calling you, I keep calling you Reverend Dr. Laura. You see, that's <laughs> prophetic. It's prophetic. Amen. But thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Okay, let's go back to sharing my screen. Amen. And I, you know, I was saying earlier when we were offline that I want um, more members of the congregation to be involved because look at all this giftedness, y'all. Yes. And so, you know, y'all are sitting on these gifts and it's nothing magical about me and Pastor Guy and the, and the halls serving as worship leaders. Somebody <laughs> else for hint, hint, could really do this. Amen. 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 We're going to now do our staying connected um, component. And we know we got some new pictures this week. Let me see, I've none on this page, but love when you all sign. I just love this picture of Reverend Carl and Pam. It's just a gorgeous picture of them. Uh, let's see, I don't, Reverend Dr. Debbie did send me a new picture, amen. So her, she's looking beautiful and gorgeous mm -hmm. as always, amen. And I think that's it for the new pictures this week, amen. Um, I wanted to point out, <clears throat> as you all know, um, there has been an increase in the reporting of suicides by some people who are famous in the media recently. And I want you all to know that we need to be aware. We know particularly amongst young people, very concerning we see an increase in suicides and particularly, um, again, people who are famous get more attention, but those people who are not as famous are also really struggling. And so I want to start something in church. From now on, we're gonna post these hotline numbers every week. And so there's a National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-8255. Those last four, um, seven digits spell the word suicide. For the uh, members of the LGBTQ plus community, there's a Trevor Project Lifeline. There's a Trans Lifeline as well, if you feel more comfortable talking with people who are more culturally sensitive to the LGBT community. If you don't want to call someone, you can crack, text the crisis text line. 741741, which is easier. And also, if you want to talk to someone who specializes in communities of color, you can text Steve Fund 741741. So someone that you love may need these numbers. So jot these numbers down. Amen. We will show these numbers every week. So if you don't get the number today, well, I'll also during sometime during the service, I'll put the numbers in the chat. But we need to be the ones who are the village, amen? amen? We need to be, we are the one, I love what Reverend Hall is doing right now. He's taking a picture of it, amen? Get your phone out, take a picture of it. That's what I do all the time. So I don't have to worry about writing it down or transcribing a number, amen? But if we want, want to um, save folks, amen, we have to be the ones they are looking for. I just did a webinar the other day and one of the things I was talking about was being a first responder. All of us, not the mental health professionals, all of us are the first responders. Why? We spend more time with loved ones, family members, friends than a mental health professional ever will. People like myself and Dr. Laura, Dr. Debbie, we may spend an hour or so with a person a week, but you see them every day. You can notice these changes. And so I actually, this is so important. You, I change the preaching schedule. So I'm going to preach next week about suicide prevention because we have to be in position to know what to do if someone is struggling, amen? And we can help people. You don't have to be a clinician to help people get help that they need, amen? And so we want to start putting these numbers up every week. And why? Because we don't know when someone will or won't be in crisis, amen? The other thing I'll say about that before we move on, one of the questions that was asked of me in the webinar was, why did Regina King's son and um, Miss USA complete suicide or die by suicide, didn't they have everything going for them? Remember you all that what you see in public may not be what's going on behind closed door. None of even us who, when we're not celebrities, we don't have our whole life paraded in public. Even those of us who use social media, remember you select what you're gonna put on there and you keep some things hidden. So we don't know what people are going through, but let's say, even if you think, wow, they had all these things going for them, Material things do not bring mm -hmm. you peace of mind. Amen. 
Material things can't love you. Material things cannot make you feel accepted. Make what I was talking about mattering. Material things don't make you matter. People help you to feel like you matter. Amen. And so it's always going to come down to the village. It's always going to come down to your tribe. It's always going to down come down to the faith community who can make a difference. And so make a difference in someone's life. Write these numbers down. Take a picture of them. Be available if you haven't seen someone or they've kind of been isolated for a while. Give them a talk. Give them a text. Let them know that you're thinking about them, amen? So we, we really have to make sure that we take care of each other, amen? amen. Now I'm going to ask Pastor God, amen. he will pray the prayer of consolation and petition. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we just uh, so grateful that you have given us another opportunity to be here to worship you collectively together one more time. God, we if we never said thank you again, we just want to let you know that we love you with our entire hearts, with our entire souls, with our entire minds, with our entire beings. God, we just uh, offer a prayer, a petition today for all those who continue to suffer uh, with the COVID-19 and all the uh, remnants uh, that this uh, uh, pandemic uh, evokes in us. We pray, God, that people continue to get an understanding of the necessity of getting their uh, vaccinations uh, so they can help not just themselves, but help somebody else. In fact, Jesus calls us to help our neighbors. Amen. So we, we pray, God, that people continue to get that understanding and do the right thing by caring about somebody else. God, there's so many people today who are sick and are shut in uh, for various ailments and whether or not it be physical or mental, we ask that you go by their homes and their families and give them an anointing from the tops of their heads to the bottom of their feet. Let them know that regardless of what's going on, that you are there, that you are present and you're in their lives and you will be with them through thick and thin, no matter, no matter what. And we pray, God, that you would give them a healing mercy, God. God, there's so many other things that are going on in this world that are very disturbing. Many of us that continue to go through various negative experiences. We all have our valid experiences, but we, we, but we do know, God, that because we believe in who you are and the walk that your son, our Lord and Savior Christ, uh, walked, uh, that we know that we, it, ultimately we still have the victory as long as we are focused in on you. So God, uh, we just want to be your emissaries. You want to go out on the battlefield, continue to fight and do the things that you would have us to do. We want to continue to fight for the dis disenfranchised and marginalized and, and, and ultimately for the least of these, because that is what you are calling us to do, God. God, just give us the strength, give us the courage to continue to be on, uh, be on the battlefield for you so we can make life on earth uh, like, it, like it will be in heaven with you, God. Oh, God, we love you today and we praise your holy name. These things we pray in your son's holy and magnificent name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor God, for that powerful prayer. Amen. Amen. We have to remember who we are and who we are. Amen. Thank you, Pastor God. Amen. And continuing on with our announcements. We have birthdays for February. And guess who's going to turn... Um, a birthday on Tuesday. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> All right, 25 years old again. Oh, no, how do I do it? What can I say? <laughs> Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm yeah. so happy. I'll be turning 65 on, um, on uh, February 8th. Pastor God told me the other day, you're really old now. <laughs> he said, you're officially old. That's okay. sure. And he still has all his teeth? <laughs> Actually, these are dentures, Trey. <laughs> oh. Amen, amen. You look at dentures, Pastor. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Listen, everybody, this is the opportunity for us to wish uh, Pastor Sherry a happy birthday. So please unmute just for a second and say happy birthday, Pastor Sherry. Happy birthday, Pastor Sherry. Thank you. Happy birthday, Pastor Sherry. 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 Pastor and Sherry, on behalf of the uh, of Beloved Community Church, uh, you should check your PayPal account. There is a gift from the Beloved Community Church. Oh, Thank you all for giving like you always do, and it makes it possible for us to honor our pastors on days when it's uh, when it's appropriate. And uh, 
today is a day where everybody can share in uh, saying happy birthday. So we will be sending you something. You can check your PayPal account today from the beloved community church. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you all, all of you all. I always feel very loved by BCC. Amen. Amen. Maya Gilchrist, uh, Quindetta's baby girl, will be, I think, 20 on the 9th. Deborah Bailey's birthday is on the 12th. That's Tamika's mommy. And Lilia, who is uh, Naima's daughter, her youngest child is going to be, um, well, I think 10 or 11. 11. I think it's 11 on the 16th. Amen. And then we have going to say happy anniversary to Ed and Chi Chi Donaldson. Their anniversary is on the 9th. Amen. We have Bible study, which will be this week coming up. And I don't know why on here we go on <laughs> February 10th. Um, and so the halls will continue their series on relationships. Amen. We've been so blessed by that. It was so powerful. Week before last, y'all, we got through one slide. <laughs> and they've been talking about communication. And I, went, and I knew I was going to get excited because they said, Pastor Sherry, you're going to love this Bible study. And you're and I do. There's no there's nobody under the sound of our voice, Pastor mm -hmm. God, that cannot use some help with communication. Amen. 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 We've been married for almost 36 years, and we learned some new things. In Amen. fact, we were talking while they were teaching about some ways that we could change some things. Amen. And so you're never too old. You've never been married too long to do something differently. Amen. And so please come out. This is the kind of thing you want to share with other people. Amen. Let other people in on the blessing. Don't be stingy with your blessing. Share the blessing with somebody else. Amen. Amen. And so we're so excited that they're continuing in that series. And also they're a blessed, anointed, and appointed teaching. So Amen. you don't want to miss out on that blessing on number counts. And we have lots of good yes, ministers and teachers in our congregation. We are really, really blessed. And with the addition of Dr. Laura. I have everything I need now. I was praying for a social worker, Dr. Laura, so you fulfilled that for me. I'm like, you know what? We just, if we had the social worker, we'd be complete. Amen. And so God, God, you have not because you ask not. Amen. We have stress management, not this week because that's my birthday on Tuesday, but the following week at seven. Please come out for stress management. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I'm stressed. I, it's particularly with the the uh, spotlight on suicide in the Black community right now, those of us who do suicide prevention work have been inundated. And so I was um, just looking over my calendar for the month, and I think I'm probably doing a workshop or something every week. And so we really need to just make sure that we take care of each other and engage in self-care. And one of the ways that we can do that, pardon me, is through our stress management class. And we have a good time, we share, we bond, and then we also do um, meditation and do um, mindfulness exercises to help to, to alleviate and teach us how to manage our stress better. Amen. Pastor then, Sherry, I'm going to uh, pass out your link uh, for stress management to uh, the people who are at Howard. You know, HBCUs oh, okay. are being um, threatened almost every day now uh, with bomb threats, and it is creating an environment of anxiety. Uh, Howard University was um, gave us a day off on Friday just to for for personal um, to help you with your own personal anxiety, just giving you a break, being able to stay home for that. So I'm going to pass out your uh, stress management link to the people that I'm in um, contact with up at Howard if they need to come and and go through that process. Good idea. We know that Bowie H uh, Howard. Uh, Coppin in Baltimore, Bowie's in Bowie, Maryland. Morgan, Morgan State. Morgan State. This Morgan's also in Baltimore. But this is, we're living in a strange time, y'all. Let's just be honest about this thing, right? And I was sharing with a colleague of mine, Pastor, I think the whole ministerial staff has been doing more prophetic preaching in the last two years between the former uh, person who occupied the White House and the pandemic. We need, um, we need, we need to pay attention and we need to provide support for each other. I'm going to stress this again more than usual because we're living in unusual times. So for example, talk to people who might be retired, who don't have the same connections with their workforce, may feel isolated from, they might feel more isolated and they don't have something to go to every day. Now, you know, people like Chief and Reverend Carl, they're, they're, they're good. But everybody's not chief and Reverend Carl, man. And so 
check on folks, make sure they're doing okay. One of my uncles who's um, in his seventies was sharing with me how isolated he feels since the pandemic, all the things that he used to do. He's a very artistic person, does poetry readings, plays, a, but he's a percussionist. He can't do any of that right now. And so he's lost his sense of purpose. And so we need to make sure we check in on folks and figure out creative ways to pe keep people actively involved, amen. So please come out for stress management on the 15th. And then last but not least, we have our next book club on February 17th. And our new book uh, is called Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. Pastor Guy? Yes, a, um, I started reading the book. It's a very interesting uh, book with some supernatural uh, elements to it. Uh, so far, it really has my attention. I've probably read uh, maybe a third of it so far. So I would encourage you to, to read the book. You don't have to be a member of BCC or Frequent Flyer to join our book club. All you have to do is have a willingness to read, engage in discussion. And we have phenomenal discussions. Most times we get on topics, we might get off topic a little bit, <laughs> yeah. a lot of times. But we have some great discussions. The last book we reviewed on this past Thursday was called 40 Acres. And my, we had a lively, lively discussion on the book 40 Acres. So if you get an opportunity to read that, read that too. But the book that's coming up on uh, February the 17th is Ring Shout. And it's uh, definitely worth the read. So please come out and join us uh, for our next book club uh, session on February the 17th. Amen, amen, amen. And come on out, we need some more men. We've got Reverend Hall Samaras and Pastor Guy holding down the fort. We need some more gentlemen, amen. So come amen. on now. Men can read too, amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> amen, I know y'all are saying, Dad, put the chest to show y'all, you cold, amen. <laughs> But please come on out and, and join and, and uh, join us. Even if you haven't read the book, a lot of times we get off topic and just talk about concepts in the book. So you'd be fine. Amen. All right. Our Pharisees in Black, we had lots of new pictures this week. So you know I was happy. Uh, Reverend Lumumba is lounging in his chair. Uh, Reverend Samaras tickles me because every week he sends me pictures of him at the barbershop. I'm not sure. Why do you go every week? But this is Because he ain't got no hair up there. <laughs> Amen. But, but he gets a trim or whatever he does. Reverend Dr. Deb sends pictures every week. Margaret sent me a lovely picture next to her artwork in her house. Reverend Paula sent some new pictures. Robin sent some new pictures. Uh, Reverend Carl is always faithful, amen. Uh, Reverend Barbara Greeland. Reverend Carl's always bringing his hats and I love these Dapper Dan hats, amen, looking all cute and everything. And uh, Reverend Debbie and I, we send pictures of our, um, of our trainees, amen. And so these are the residents that work with Reverend Dr. Deb. Dr. Laura brought in a new picture. Erin brought in a new picture. Reverend Holly, even though she was under the weather, sent a picture. This is the Burning Bush Bible Study. Yay, they sent in a group picture from last week. And my honey bunny mm -hmm. of 35 years sent in his picture. Y'all know I love my dog, Flirt, who's sitting under my feet. So she, I'm going to keep this picture up for a while. I did do a new picture, but I, I like this picture. And we have Leola always sends a beautiful picture as well. And Leola, I thought she was a, an Egyptian princess when I saw that picture. I was like, oh, look this queen right here. So what do you do for, to um, bring awareness to domestic violence internationally? Take a picture of yourself in black, send it, amen? Send it to me. I prefer that you send it to me email. It's easier for me to download it that way. But let's make a pledge next week for my birthday. Oh, this is what you can do for my birthday. Everybody send in a picture in black, everybody. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, there, you're not gonna believe this. There are 60 people on the mm -hmm. roll at BCC. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Six zero. I want, I'm not gonna ask for 60 pictures, but I want at least 30 pictures, that's half. I send out 45 texts a week. So I want 30 new pictures of people in black and share those pictures with somebody or on your social media to say why you are doing it, amen? So two things I want pictures sent to me, and I want you to put your post your picture on social media and talk about why you're wearing black on Thursday, amen? And imagine if you did that, if 45 people did that, or 30 people, and then they shared it on their social media, then other people shared it. We could really, really make a dent in awareness about domestic violence and human trafficking, amen? And then this is um, Reverend Marcy um, uh, Washington's mom sent a picture to Dr. Deb. Tanya, Dr. Tanya sent a picture. This is Dr. Debbie's friends. Dr. Debbie's friends always send in pictures, amen. And that's another thing, BCC. You shouldn't let people who don't belong to BCC out send pictures, out picture you, amen. And so we, we invite everyone to send a picture, but we particularly want 
DCC members to participate. And now she's gonna to have to do double duty today. Dr. Debbie, is there a doctor in the house? There is, there is. And finally, there's a little bit of good news. And um, we of course are still in the pandemic. We of course, unfortunately in the United States still have the highest death toll and we're approaching um, being the ones with the highest number of infection of COVID. With that said, the number of infections in DC, Maryland, and Virginia have decreased. But please don't take that to mean that things are over. There were still 1,700 uh, cases in DC, 11,000 cases in Maryland, and 46,000 cases in Virginia just in this past week. In the United States, we are still averaging 124,000 new cases every day. And what's uh, sad for me is 23% of our cases, the new cases are all in children. But there is good news. The good news is Pfizer is presenting their data to the FDA for approval for vaccines for our babies six months to up to five years of age. We are hoping that that gets approved. They delayed it so that they could get more data. What we found is our babies responded really, really well, but the two, three and four year olds didn't really have a good response to the dose. So unlike the others, um, this one is gonna recommend three doses um, for, for our babies, which is kind of like, Everything else we do, DPT, the polio, the they are all like two months, four months, six months. So we're familiar with giving the doses several times to make it be helpful. We still have um, lots of people hospitalized and in the ICUs. There's only been a little drop in the needle, but at least it's a drop in the needle and the people in, who are staffing who have been out are starting to come back. So we're not feeling quite as much pinch inside the hospitals. What I do say is the majority of the patients, excuse me, <clears throat> who are hospitalized are unvaccinated. And I understand that people are, have some angst about vaccines and mandates for going to school. So just a little history, um, our, the, first of all, the Department of Public Health is supposed to make sure the welfare of the entire population is covered. So in 1850, we had our first school inoculation with a vaccine. By 1963, there were 20 school um, in the state and the District of Columbia that mandated vaccines. By the time we got to 1980, all public schools in the United States require vaccines for children if they're coming to public school. And so it's not unusual for us to request that our children are vaccinated so that we can protect each other. Please continue to wear your mask. The KN95, the N95, all of those are best the cloth is not as good for Omicron in particular. Wash your hands, wash everything, and try to stay distance. It's better for outside activities than indoor activities. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Deb. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. Amen for her diligence, Amen. her faithfulness. Y'all know this is a ministry, right? Amen. Such a good example of using your gifts that you use in your everyday life to further God's um, um, province as well, amen. amen. So we wanna thank her for her faithfulness. And again, she does this every week, weekend and week out without fail, amen. That's, that's a serious ministry right there, amen. All right, Reverend Samaras Hall, it's time to give. All right, all right. <clears throat> this is the part of our worship service where um, uh, we do our giving and giving is actually a part of uh, worship. Um, we like to be benevolent and we like to uh, be able to do so without condemnation. 
And that's our practice here at the Beloved Community Church. We would love for everybody that's uh, here in attendance to be able to take advantage of the opportunity to give at this way station for God. You can do it in three ways. One is you can go directly to our uh, PayPal, uh, go to our website, uh, and at the PayPal, there's a PayPal button on the website at www.belovedcommunitychurchmd.org slash giving. And it will take you directly to our uh, PayPal um, um, portion where you can give, or you can go directly to uh, PayPal. I don't see that on the screen today, but it's, uh, it's at uh, our uh, email address, uh, belovedcommunitychurch at yahoo.com. And you can do that uh, there. Also, uh, if you'd like to just put a stamp on it and put a check in the mail, you can send it to Beloved Community Church, 17500 Indian no, Head. Can't send it there. Oh, wow. You're all of that's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all no, right. No, no. That's why that's why that slide's off. Reverend Samaras, you I put the correct slide up now. I apologize. You did? I, I don't oh, see it. One. Okay, my bad. I don't know what happened there. Okay, sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the um, the uh, mailbox number. <laughs> P.O. Box. The P.O. Box number, 441439. 439. P.O. Box 441439. And uh, at uh, and you can send it to our PO box there, and I'll be sure to um, to get it uh, get it to you expeditiously, uh, get it to the uh, treasurer expeditiously, and get it deposited. Um, if you do your if you do it by PayPal uh, and uh, do it the next week, you can you can it'll go, it'll populate as soon as you start typing in beloved community church and give you an opportunity uh, to give. So. Please uh, encourage others uh, to give, and uh, and certainly um, we we are a place where we uh, are able to meet God's need, whether you are a member at the Beloved Community Church or not. This is about uh, God's beloved community and how we take care of God's beloved community. So we thank you for that. God, thank you, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all of who you are. God, we'd ask that you would bless this offering and that you would bless the givers, God. There, there will always be, uh, uh, we know that there will always be a need, but we'll always have a, a spot where folks can come and get a blessing and that the people that are represented by the beloved community church will be a blessing for someone else. Thank you, God, for that. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you as you've inspired our spirit to do your will. These blessings we are asking your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now have our offer to
Now, before I talk about Reverend Dr. Debbie, who's going to be doing the preach word today, I do want to acknowledge our very own Robin Lewis, yes. who did a phenomenal job preaching a sermon about environmental justice at Chevy Chase Presbyterian Church. Please give her a hand clap. And if you missed it, it was phenomenal. Amen. And um, if you didn't get a chance to actually go there and see it, it should be on, on Facebook at Chevy Chase Presbyterian Church on their webs on their Facebook page. But she did an absolutely wonderful job. So thank you so much, Robin, for continuing to minister in God's vineyard. And Robin is actually in church right now. Amen. Amen. So she Amen. did what she had to do there and came to her own church. But she was phenomenal. Beautiful prayer. Be the prayer was so gorgeous. I was telling her she needs to do that prayer here at BCC. But let's again give her a hand clap of praise for her work. Amen. 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 All right. Today we are going to be blessed with a sermon by Reverend Dr. Deborah Hoyt Jones our very own anointed and appointed preacher, woman of God. Amen? Amen. Her scripture today comes from the book of Matthew, the first gospel that is presented in the New Testament, although it is not the first one that is written, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 15. This is a familiar verse. Amen? Pastor Guy, can you do that? Yes, yes, yes. And the scripture reads as follows. Beware of practicing your righteousness before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you when you are praying. Do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, our father in heaven, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we do also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word from the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
We'll now have our sermonic selection. I'm going away um, by beloved praise led by Reverend Samaris Hall. And then after that, the next voice you will hear will be Jesus himself speaking through the voice of Reverend Dr. Deborah Boyd Jones. Hear you she and truly be blessed, amen.
Amen, 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 amen. Soon as <clears throat> we are going to see the king, amen. Yes? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Um, as always, we are so thankful that Pastor Sherry and Pastor Guy allow us um, to be behind the sacred desk or at my table, uh, <laughs> wherever it is. And also, I wanted to say happy birthday, Pastor Sherry. Normally, we would be taking you out to dinner and having a great old time, but uh, we haven't quite figured out that COVID thing, but it's coming for sure. Um, let us pray. Oh, great and mighty, mighty God. We, uh, I am so thankful how much you love me. I am thankful for the information, the inkling of what you poured into me today. Lord, I pray that I am able to give it back mm, even halfway as well as you gave it to me. And certainly, Lord, the meditation of my mouth, I want to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. I have to say that we have lots of themes every year, and I love all of them, but frankly, I am so encouraged by our theme for 2022. Refocus, reframe, renew. I get refocus from, you know, there's so many issues going around. There are so many things that have been happening, the pandemic, the syndemic, the loss of our loved ones, and there have been many even the loss of the president of our sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, the fact that people are struggling with depression, anxiety, the number of people in the hospital is going up, the concerns and the fear and all of those things. And so I understand we need to refocus on the pro promises and the provisions that our God gives us. That is what gives us absolute hope in order to continue. And since this is a new year, it is always a good time and it makes sense that we take a moment to renew our vows to the very Lord that we say that we love. But as I began to look at the word refrain, and certainly at BCC, refrain is not an unusual word, we are quite familiar with that term. We understand that it means take that opportunity to look at a situation, a person, a relationship from another perspective. But you know, the only one with a perfect perspective is that of God. So God's perspective is never polluted by prejudice or by politics, or even any of the isms that plague our world today. So it means that reframe would say to us that we need to learn how to see things as God sees them. This perspective must encompass what is said and also what is done. After all, we are called to be doers of the words and not just hearers only. In order to achieve this goal, we must be open to changing how we think, hmm. changing how we speak and what we ultimately will do. In other words, we need Jesus to be our filter in all things at all times in between all kinds of people. And sometimes even when we are speaking to ourselves. In order to see things from God's perspective, we must become more and more like Christ until it is second nature to reframe and see it from God's perspective. Now that would mean that the five-year-old Sunday school version of God's perspective just won't do. Instead, we must seek the perspective of our God of the Bible. We will not have true perspective relying on what a five-year-old knows. 
In other words, my people, it is time to throw away the pacifier and stop drinking milk. Instead, we need to be eating of the meat of the word. Why would we say meat for my vegetarians and vegans? We are saying meat because sometimes we are really going to need to wrestle with that gristle in order to get to the sweet, juicy part of the word. For example, if we look at Genesis, the book of beginnings, it says that God created nature, plants, animals, and fish. And then God said, it was good. Then God created humans in God's own image. Then God said, it was very good. So whether we agree with it or not, all humans were made by God. Now, milk drinkers try to separate and divide humans because they speak and have the understanding of little children. So I'm here to declare that in 2022, we need to look at with God's eyes, not put our own finite eyes on the situation, in fact, it's time for us to give up those diapers and pull-ups and put on our big boy and big girl panties or drawers. Therefore, know this, reading through the Bible in one year will not help you. It's commendable, but it won't help you. What you need to do is study. That's what's required. Choosing to hear the word with all readiness of mind is absolutely the thing to do. But we need to be more like the Bereans in the scriptures, where they search the scriptures daily to see if it was so. Our opinions, our thoughts, and even our deeds would be far more valuable when we predicate everything we do on the very essence and nature of God. Our relationship, in fact, will be far more intimate when we begin to see things God's way, refusing Reverend Carl to lean on our own understanding. So the good news is when we refrain to see everything from God's perspective, God will always lead us to greater. That's right. So I ask you to consider with me the sermon topic for today. Reframe, call to greater. Not greater than, but call to greater. So when I was searching, after I got that, it's like, okay, okay. When I was searching the scripture, I found that I landed right in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter six. Of course, we know Matthew is the first book in the New Testament, although we think that Mark was actually written before that. It is a synoptic gospel, so you can find something similar in Luke chapter 11. However, it's the Matthew description that really captured what I thought we needed to know if we're talking about reframing. And so Jesus on the mount, um, he decided in this sermon that it was important, since he had all these followers and all of these disciples, that there needs to be some teaching. And so Jesus proceeded to teach about God's law, including love your enemies, the Beatitudes, you know, those vitamins that we need to take every day and the Lord's Prayer. And then he rounded that part out with a precaution about being judgmental. God's perspective is evident from the very beginning of this chapter in Matthew. Our giving, our praying, our private prayer, and forgiveness. So point number one would be all about giving. Jesus absolutely wants us to give to those in need and to give generously. 
Although there will be a light that shines on those who give generously all the time, but understand the light is always supposed to lead back, lead back to our Jesus, our God, giving God glory and giving God praise. After all, it is God who supplied everything we need. It is God who promised us that God would make us rich enough to always be able to give generously. This is the proper perspective on how we're giving. We need to refuse to stoop to being mere actors or role players, striving to shift the focus onto ourselves. It is our God who is important in this case. There is no need for exhaustive lists of accomplishments or trumpets that we herald for ourselves when we are giving that merely defeats the purpose that, that leads from God's perspective. Ooh, I feel like y'all are saying, yikes, toe stepping happening up in the camp. God will get the glory when we're giving generously and freely, when we give it from our heart. Not only when we give it from our heart, when we do this, it's because we are given out of the devotion that we have for our Lord. Not for what people say, not for what people think, but really how will we please our God? So when we choose to accept the call to greater, understand that there's gonna be greater generosity and greater ability to give and greater way to please our God. Point number two, here's the shift from giving to preparation for prayer. From God's perspective, prayer should not be thought of as a means to manipulate God into surrendering God's sovereignty to become our personal bellhop, waitstaff, or a glorified Santa Claus. Our prayer should never be shaped by the world or the society standards, which are often self-serving and short-sighted, or worse, you have no idea what it is to please God or what God actually wants for you. Remember, Jesus is and always has been radical and countercultural. So if what you're doing is kind of going the flow, going with the flow of the world, hmm, check yourself. You are not using God's perspective. When we reframe, we are called to greater understanding. You see, you have to know that God is always thinking about us and absolutely has a plan to prosper us and not to harm us, a plan for our future. At least that's what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11. Go ahead, don't be afraid to step into greater, choosing to allow the extravagant love that's freely given by our God to each of us will always overflow into every prayer that we say, and it will flow into every gift that we give, and thereby our direction, our path will be outlined for us. The prayer delivered from God's perspective always leads to greater intimacy with our God. So although we recognize that God's transcended position in heaven in the very throne room when I would do liturgical dance, it was the one time that I can remember actually being in the throne room in the middle of that dance, looking at the toes of Jesus high and lifted up. But at the same time, we have to know and we have to feel that God is ever present with each of us in the good times. And even when we find ourselves in trouble up to here in the muck and the mire, 
anxious, depressed, and feeling lost. We get a greater awareness of God's presence when we refrain and choose to look through God's eyes. Then we see that God saves, God strengthens us, and God activates deliverance, either through the situation, around it, over, or from the very challenges that are presented to us. Without reframing in prayer, we would be stuck praying about defeat rather than rejoicing in our expected victory, which God has promised us. Point number three. The example prayer that is presented here is like the icing on the cake. From God's perspective, before we start to pray, we need to answer two questions. Is our prayer directed to God or is it directed to humans? Is our prayer God-centered or self-centered? And I'm sure you can think about some of the prayers that all of us have uttered from time to time. In the model prayer, we see initially, first and foremost, a desire to uh, let God know that we honor our God. Hallowed be thy name means that we recognize and call out your holiness. We recognize and call out your holiness. We declare in that beginning statement that we recognize that you are omnipresent, ever present, that you are omniscient, you are all knowing, nothing takes you by surprise. You are omnipotent, all powerful, holy and sovereign. You will respond and act as you see fit when you see fit. This declaration should in fact elicit great awe and excitement. How great, how great is our God. How great, how great. A name above every name. How great is our God. Just with the beginning of this prayer, we have no doubt that this particular prayer is totally directed to our God. And more than just the all we feel, this opening implies that we actually believe what we are praying about, we believe to whom we are praying, and it confirms that our God is well able to do any and everything. We actually declare in these few little words that we believe that God cares about each and every one of us. God cares about me and God cares about you. It is a clear statement that our trust is in our magnificent and mighty God. Don't you see how reframing is calling you to greater, a greater confidence because we declare that we do not serve a weak and impotent God, but a magnificent, omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful God. All of that declaration, all of that awe helps us and makes it easier for us to fix our attention on God. It makes it easier for us to be more available to please God. If God is all that in a bag of chips, then absolutely, don't I want to please that God? Next ooh, are the ringers for me. It was your kingdom come, your will be done. Hmm. So the scholars in the room understand that kingdom come has both a present and an end time kind of meaning. And so for sure, God is the author and finisher of how things will unfold finally in the end time. But here in the present time, making this statement, your kingdom come, calls 
us to greater commitment and calls us to greater willingness to do all that we can do to bring about God's loving, peaceful kingdom right here and right now. From God's perspective, we absolutely can influence others, our family, our friends, our coworkers, our colleagues, and get this, even our enemies. Back in chapter five of Matthew, Jesus re reminded us or told us, you know, you're supposed to love your enemies. And if that were not enough, Jesus commanded us to pray for them as well. We are not to have hardened hearts, which is why we must pray. And sometimes we have to pray without ceasing just to keep the hardness at bay. Lord, have mercy. This calling to greater as a result of reframing and looking from God's perspective actually removes us from being stumbling blocks. Yes. We and our attitudes, our behavior, our responses, the things we say, the things we do can be the stumbling blocks for others. It can set up as though we are trying to obstruct God's plan. We can really be greater just by reframing to look at everything through the eyes of our Lord. If that were not enough, this statement, your will be done. Now, here's where I say, if we really are ready to tell the truth, many of us, okay, me, struggle from time to time with trying to include your will be done as part of my prayer be it at the beginning, and this is at the beginning of the prayer, or at the end or even in the middle, we struggle with your will be done. Well, preacher, why is that so? Because the truth is, I mean, the real truth is, don't tell nobody, I told you, is we want what we want when we want it. That's the real truth. The other truth is, we don't actually believe that God is always working for our good simply because we don't see it happening. And I heard a scripture say that, why do you need faith if you can see a thing? It's when you need faith, when you can't see the thing. Could it also be that we cannot add this to our prayers? Because the truth is, I've been uh, a milk drinker most of my life, and I choose happy meals, and therefore I do not really know the true essence or nature of God. And as such, I have trust issues. There are humans who have let me down, who have hurt me, abandoned me, betrayed me, sold me down the river. So how can I trust this God that I can't see? And the answer is when we refrain and take the time to study and know the very nature, the very essence of God, when we understand that God does not have preference for a specific human over another human, when we know that God is not impressed by the checkbox relationship, you know, I went to church today, check. I don't put in $5 for tithes and offering today because we need to feed that family down the road check. I read one scripture this week and I prayed when I got in trouble, check, check. God is not the least bit impressed with that at all. Let us not be afraid to add thy will be done to any prayer. It actually is for us to surrender the false impression that we have some control. If we think about it, the pandemic has been good for one thing. 
everybody, rich, poor, leaders, followers, everybody finally understands they have no control. Therefore, when we refrain, it takes a relationship to a place greater with greater faith and greater trust. You see, God is inclusive. I need to repeat that. God is inclusive of all of God's creation, whether it's animal, whether it's nature, whether it's human. Ain't that right, Reverend? Reverend Robin. <laughs> Ain't that right, Robin? We all can trust and believe when we look at things from God's perspective. Rather than looking at on the outside, God is always looking at our hearts. So now that we sort of began, now that we've sort of completed the beginning of this prayer, it is at this point where we sort of shift just a little bit and we begin to talk about maybe our needs and the needs of our community. Because there never should be prayer for our needs without prayers for our community, be it local, national, global, the prayer for our community. So some of us have to check our prayers where our prayers are, bless our family, keep them safe, bless our people that we know, keep bring our children back home to us safely in Jesus name, amen. Check our prayers. So in this section, we have read, we have forgiven this, we have us lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. And so immediately when we see bread, we think physical, we think food, but we already know that God said, I will provide all that you need. That is a promise that goes without asking. So this bread is not only for us physically, but what about my community? What about their needs? Can we make sure that they too are fed? But what's more important is that we are talking about spiritual needs. And so it is Jesus who said, I am the bread of life. You will never hunger or thirst when you choose to line up with me and begin to see things through God's perspective. We are assured that we will have provision. We are assured spiritually that Jesus is always going to be present and never surprised by our circumstances. And so that leads us to forgiveness. From God's perspective, we have all fallen short of God's glory. And yet we are reminded that we are forgiven. Every single day, we are forgiven. But more importantly, we need to learn to forgive those who have offended us, who have hurt us, who are rude to us, who have betrayed us, and on and on and on. This is important in order for us to maintain a greater heart capacity. We don't want the love that God is lavishly giving to us to get pushed out by holding on to animosity, resentment, bitterness, and hate, setting us up to have a hardened heart. This is not only detrimental to our interpersonal relationship, but more importantly, it impacts our relationship with God so that the hardness and the barriers try to block God's love, but allows and actually attracts evil to begin to take up residence, making it almost impossible for God's love to be the bomb that we need for healing and restoration. Notice I did say almost impossible because with God, nothing is impossible. And so while we're talking about this forgiveness, I want to remind us, by the way, when we do not recognize that God hand fashioned each and every one of us to be unique, to be gifted, to be designer originals, imitated but not duplicated, and always meant to be greater, we are in fact 
rejecting our God and rejecting God's love. So forgive yourself. Stop thinking that you are less and remember you are greater. Do not allow unforgiveness to become your lifestyle. Don't let anything or anyone block you from being greater. Just as we reframe our temptations, trials, and testing along in this request, also asking to be delivered from the evil one, it's not a beg or a plead. It really is a victory shout that I have so much confidence in who you are, God, that even if the temptations come, even if the testing come, even when the trials are hard and difficult, I know you are there and I know you are well able to intervene on my behalf. This, in fact, is a victory shout. We choose to put our hands in these verses back into the hands of our creator. Therefore, I beseech you, I beg you <coughs> to choose to reframe this year. Accept the call to greater, a greater generosity, a greater desire to please God greater understanding and intimacy in our relationship with our God, greater awareness and greater faith and trust. Yes, choose to be a reframer from God's perspective so that we can have greater confidence, greater commitment, and greater will willingness to do all that God says that we can do. And even better, there would be even more love. As we give away the love that God pours to us, God replenishes the love that we need. So choose to refrain. And only when we choose to refocus, refrain, will we then be ready to renew authentic worship, unadulterated praise, and accept that we have an incredible relationship as God's favorite child, amen. Amen, let's give God a hand clap of praise for that wonderful, wonderful sermon. Amen, amen, Pastor Guy. Amen, amen. Just want to uh, thank Reverend Debbie for that powerful uh, sermon this morning on um, reframe call to greater and how we must look at God's perspective in everything that we do and, Given generously and preparing for, for prayer. And I, I just love the way how she exegeted the, the Lord's Prayer, uh, uh, how we are supposed to govern uh, our lives accordingly uh, to the precepts of God. Amen. So thank you, Reverend Debbie, for that. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the preach word today. Amen. Amen. And see, she got some learning on her burning, y'all. Y'all saw how she exegeted that text. <laughs> Go Pastor Deb, go Pastor Deb, go Pastor Deb. Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Amen. So now we are at the point where we're at the invitation. Amen. Pastor Guy, you want to do the invitation? And again, we uh, again we just want to thank everybody who felt enough Robbie to be here with the beloved community church today. Amen. We've had a wonderful time in worship today and and uh, the scripture and the black history moment and uh, the announcements and the songs and the prayers and everything that we have done, amen. The powerful word given by uh, Reverend Dr. Debbie today and everything that we've done has led us to this point in our worship service today. Uh, that is the invitation. This is the invitation to inviting God into our lives and for all those who don't have that intimate relationship uh, with a savior. Uh, like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask that you consider that today, that you come to God's family, a God that is always going to be with you no, ma no matter what. Uh, a God that once you learn to look at life from God's perspective, you will realize that there is nothing that is impossible, there's nothing that you can't do, and that we already have the victory. That is the type of God uh, that we serve. So if you want to become a part of that type of um, 
a family, a Christian family, we ask that you examine yourself, examine yourself today and your circumstances and your situation and ask yourself, do I want to be at that intimate relationship with a savior who's always with you? Amen. The second petition, you want to become a part of this branch of Zion that we lovingly refer to the beloved community church. Uh, we ask that you come. As you see in front of you on the slide, it says that God's doors are are open to all. And that is our mantra. We are open to everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter your lot in life, because you are God's child, because you're God's favorite child, as Reverend Debbie always likes to say, you are welcome into the beloved community church. Oh, we're not perfect, but we are, we know that we serve a perfect God and we're trying to do everything we can do to emulate the unconditional love of God. Amen. So that's who we are. So again, we have two petitions today, two invitations. If you want to become a part of God's loving family, we ask that you come. If you want to become a part of God's beloved community church, this branch of Zion, we ask that you come. And there's various ways you can let us know. You can put it in the chat uh, right now. You can text us at the number before you. You can email us at the email that you see before you. Any, We will accept you any kind of way. God don't let. It does not matter to God how you come. You don't have to come to during the church service. You can do it after the church service. God don't care about that. What God cares about is you coming. Amen. So again, we 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 pray today that you consider coming to God's family. You consider coming to the beloved uh, community church, and we just thank you for being here today. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 We are now going to go ahead and prepare for our um, communion service. Amen. And I need to take the spotlight off of Dr. Bear. Mm -hmm. And I think she's saying she's not spotlighted. Okay. All right. So. You all see the screen? Amen. I'm having like some weird technical difficulties here, y'all. So just give me a minute. Amen. Amen. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life, life abundantly. Amen. Thank you. Amen. If you have not had the chance or opportunity to give, then you can still give. Amen. And so you can send it to the Love Community. Go to our website, lovecommunitychurch.org.giving. Um, or you can also go to our P.O. Box, Beloved Community Church, P.O. Box 441439, Fort Washington, Maryland. Amen. We're now going to go ahead and begin our communion service. Pastor Guy is going to lead us in that today. Amen. Amen, amen. Each each uh, first Sunday, the Beloved Community Church, it's a tradition of the Beloved Community Church that we do our Holy Communion. Um, it's not mandated we do on our first Sunday. Several, some churches do it every Sunday or periodically, but it's our tradition at BCC that we do it on the first Sunday. So at this time, we ask that you uh, just take it some, some time out and just begin to, if you have not already, we'll continue to medicate, med meditate uh, on, the, uh, on the audience of one, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Communion is a time that uh, we do a remembrance of the things that Christ has asked us uh, to do, but just not a remember, but it's an act of remembrance. Continue to do the things that God has asked us to do. Continue to go out on the battlefield and fight for the things that God would, uh, would, would want us to do. Continue to you know, walk in, um, in, in, in God's light. That's what we are called to do, amen. Uh, so at this time, this is a, 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 a corporate collective uh, communion that we do. 
we had a, a prayer of confession. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Holly to read the prayer of confession, and then we as a congregation will respond. Amen. And then I'm going to ask Reverend Lumumba to do the prayer of adoration, and then we as a congregation will respond. Following that, I will ask the ministers to do the prayer of consecration. Amen. And then we will uh, deliver the elements of the bread and the wine. Amen. So if we can start off with the Reverend Holly doing the um, prayer of confession, I'll ask everybody else to mute. Whoever's, unless you're speaking, I'll ask everybody to stay on mute. Thank you. Reverend Holly, are you there? If not, I will go ahead and do the uh, prayer of confession. Amen. Almighty God, creator of all things, we acknowledge that we have often fallen short of your glory and that we have offended you with our many sins, be they by commission or omission, through thought, word, or deed. We do sincerely repent and are truly sorry for our sins, just remembering the many ways that we have offended you and have broken your heart fills us with grief. Have mercy on us, O God, for our Redeemer and Savior, Jesus Christ's sake. Please give us another opportunity to serve and please you with our whole hearts, our whole minds, and our whole spirits, so that in doing so, we might bring glory and honor to your most holy name. Together, have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. In creating me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your body spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. Reverend Lumumba. <clears throat> Has it popped up? Yes. I'm, I don't see it. I, oh, there it goes. <clears throat> Prayer of adoration. Because you are the heavenly architect of our faith, the ever-present, all-knowing, all-powerful God, because you are El Shaddai, the one who is more than enough. Because you are Elohim, the eternal creator and sustainer who both initiates and keeps a covenant with us. Because you are able to look beyond our flaws and see our possibilities. Because you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, the one who always supplies all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And because you are Jehovah Shalom, the one who gives us a peace that transcends our circumstances. We cannot help but give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory, O oh God. Together, O oh God, you, you are, are my God. God. I, I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. Ministers together. Almighty God, who because of your tender mercies did make a perfect, full, and complete sacrifice by offering up your only begotten son for the remission of our sins. Jesus, our savior and redeemer, instituted this sacrament Holy Communion and remembrance of his death and passion so that we might be partakers of his body and his blood. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please take the bread. In the same way, 
he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please take the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Amen, amen, amen. 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 We hope that you all were blessed by the service. Let's again give God a hand clap of praise for Reverend Dr. Debbie for that wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful sermon. Amen. I want to thank Dr. Laura for her uh, Black History moment, amen, which was also very eloquent. And thank all of you all for coming out today to worship and celebrate with us. We're now ready for our benediction. May we go forward to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, and to to let the press go free and to break every yoke. Let us covenant not to take easy answers or succumb to apathy, but to seek God's will in all that we do. Let us follow Christ's lead in redirecting our gaze to God's economy and commit to distributive justice so that all may have abundance, freedom and peace, remembering that we are citizens that belong to Jesus Christ's reign. May the peace of God, the love of Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all of God's children, and that's everyone under the sound of my voice, say amen. 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 Everyone can unmute. Unmute. Really the, chalk. For those who, before you unmute, for those who are on Facebook, amen. We hope that you enjoyed the service. We invite you to come again, and we hope that you have a blessed week. Amen. Please come and join us again on Thursdays for our Bible study or come back again for our um, the following week for stress management or our book club. Amen. Be blessed.